this time. Is that bad? Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy his body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and this certainly can carry nothing out. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doeth corruption inherit the incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption 
and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much ye know that your labor is not in vain. This is the word of the Lord. Okay, so we have another song. I'm going to ask to stand again one more time on the song sheet. And can it be? We're just following your program as is. So stand with me, please. Song on your sheet and can it be? And
First of all, I would like to thank you all for attending today. The last farewell for my beloved father, Gerald Fitz Alvin Innes. Secondly, thanks to cousin Elvin for putting together this beautiful sender. My sweet, precious father was a cool, strong, humble, hardworking family man. He always saw good in others. He was a forgiving man. I loved and admired him for that. He was born in Aruba, 19th April, 1942. He had 10 siblings. He came to St. Vincent in the late 50s. He loved the island so much, he never left. Who can blame him for that? He built his foundation here, family house, furniture shop, his estate. He has family and good friends here. They all say good things about him. He had respect and love from the community and church. I loved him and admired him for that. I am his only child, through no fault of his own, was taken away from his life 
was reunited 20 years later. That is the one most precious memory of my life. We opened our arms, we hugged, looked at each other. He said, daughter, I love you and missed you. I cried, father, I love you too. Father, I am here now. Rest in peace. Sorry it took so long. This way we spoke, we planned a great family union. As we all know, time waits for no one. He has three grandchildren, Stefan, Stephen, Jade. Six great-grandchildren, Omari, Novea, Jerry, Josiah, Shania, Shade. Stephen is here, sadly he is still in quarantine. These are challenging times for everyone. Not everyone was able to travel from overseas and we are connected through media platforms. They are here in spirit. Love you all for that. Memories are all we have in life. Let's all through action show our love to one another. He was a great role model, always positive, giving advice and guidance when needed to his grandchildren and myself. Thank you to his wife for loving him for many years. I give thanks to Cousin Elvin for being a rock to my father. He was always there in good times and bad, especially in his sickness. We love you for that. Thank you for all those who supported him and befriended him. He was taken too soon. What I learned from him is the importance of love and unity. He loved his family and would always ask for pictures and would always ask for more and more pictures. He would be overwhelmed that we are here today to give him the best send-off, especially during these challenging times. I am extremely proud and honoured to call you Father. We will continue your legacy. Love you, Father. Thank you. We now have a special song by Mrs. Hamilton, friend. You love me. I am longing for you, and someday on the ice stand, there my home is gonna be turned. For a country to which I have never, never been before, no sad goodbyes will yet be spoken. The time won't. Of 
few more days to labor Then I'm gonna take My heavenly, heavenly flight Beulah I am longing for Fitzalvanes, better known as Jerry. Now, as far as I remember, Jerry was born in San Nicolas, Aruba, on the 19th of April, 1942. He was the son of William Ennis and Ruby Edwards Ennis. He was the brother of Estelita, Dora, Dari, Eric, Owen, Elaine, Shirley, Ralph, and Dora. As far as I was told, when Jerry was growing up in Aruba, he was very good with his hands. He always seemed to be meddling with his hands to do stuff. He completed his elementary school, um, schooling in Aruba and three years of trade in trade school. In 1959, his father retired from the Lago Company and came to settle here in St. Vincent where he is originally from, because his father is from Georgetown. However, he built a house right up here in Richmond Hill, and there's where the family settled for a while. After a period of time, the family, some of the family migrated to, back to England and Aruba. But Jerry was left here along with Val, which is his brother, one of his brothers. When I came to, to know Jerry and lived up here also myself, back in 1968, Jerry launched his train right downstairs at that building that was owned 
and still owned by the Robertson. His tutor in his field of trade was Gideon Robinson, also the founder of this church in which we sat, in which we sit in. Anyhow, after a period of years, Jerry was capable to handle his own affairs. So he went down to Kingstown and opened up his own business. Now Jerry business was created in his own vision to look after the poor classes of people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And because of that, he was able to, to, to um, create a name here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. As far as fit use on the leeward side and fancy on the windward side. But as competition become fierce, Jerry had was to migrate back up to Richmond Hill. I use the word migrate. Came back up to Richmond Hill and started to continue his business. By that time, when he was doing his business, he had a long-standing friend and wife, whose name, and she's present here now, Celia. Now, it's amazing how things do happen in life. When Jerry set up the business in Kingstown, we all worked together for a period of time. But there were times when I did not see Jerry because I, by then I was living on my own. So I go to the shop and I'm asking for Jerry. Jerry is not here. So I find it very strange I keep going asking for Jerry. Jerry is not there. So one day I asked one of the guys, where's Jerry? They said, Jerry is in fancy. I said, what? Fancy? What Jerry doing in fancy? They said, Jerry have a girlfriend in fancy. So when I saw Jerry, I said, Jerry, you live all the top and gone fancy to look for girlfriend. But Jerry was, Jerry, Jerry whole love life was bent on this young lady called Celia. Now let me give you an idea what Jerry had us to do to go to Fancy. Fancy those days, in those days over the dry river, they had no light and they had no pipe bone water. If I'm wrong, Celia correct me. So when, when, Jerry, when Jerry goes to Fancy, he would come up at Oria, pointing Oria, and walk over to go to look for Celia. So that was part, I can't give you the whole history, but that was part of Jerry's love life. So when, when Jerry and Celia came together and get married, she was very instrumental in assisting Jerry to achieve some of his goals by setting up houses in which he rented up until today to make a living. Now, let me turn to Jerry's spiritual life. Jerry was a very spiritually oriented individual. Being members of the New Testament Church of God that at the time was in Paul's Avenue, Jerry was very much used in the church as a song service leader, as a prayer leader, and most of the other times when we go to OMEA meetings, Jerry was the featured speaker. We had a very unique sort of relationship in that church. But as time rolled on, most of the members migrated. So we all went our own little way. And that was that part of Jerry's spiritual life. Now, as I looked at my cousin Jerry, when we leave home on mornings coming off the hill up there, Jerry was always singing in his own flamboyant, unique, emotional style. But one of the songs that always, I always remember he uses to sing, Thank God for a mother like mine. 
For our love is so pure and divine. She taught me to love the Savior above. Thank God for a mother like mine. That was one of his favorite songs. Now, as Jerry journeyed on to life, health-wise, he was not he was not as as I would have been. He suffered from asthma at a period of time, and that had done a lot of damage to him in terms of he'd been able to do some of the things that he wanted, but he struggled too. And we were extremely close, very, very close. And as he rent his, rented his um, places, there were times when he was stressed out. Because some members of the um, houses were giving him problems. And he was, he was not good at taking on stress. So he took ill. And that was a very serious part in my life. Because I took Jerry down at, at me for two weeks. But after he was there for two weeks, he wanted to go back home. So I, I, I sent him back home with a friend of his that he had. But I did not know the extreme of his, his problem. And it became worse. And he was hospitalized, but he got better. Now, my final part of my eulogy is that me and Jerry were very close, as I said before. We talk and text every day. I will walk from Mackie's Hill and come up to Maury Village several times to, to visit and be in, in, in company with my cousin. But I realized that there were symptoms where he, not, he, he was making some, some, um, some conversation that didn't make sense. And he was calling for me. And I came, and when I came, he, he asked me to take him down with me. So I took him down with me and he was down there with me. But the situation got worse. And he was hospitalized. I go there several times along with um, Chanel, because she was, she was like his caretaker also. And I looked at my cousin. I looked at my cousin and I know he wanted me. <laughs> I know how much he wanted me because he was he was suffering. And the last Sunday I went to visit him. He said, Elvin, I'm gonna die. He said he's gonna die. I said, Jerry, you're not going to die. And he said, yes, I'm going to die. I'm not taking you with me anyway. So I want to give me a good burial. And as I stood there and I looked at my cousin, and Jerry saw to me, he just going to die. My best friend, my brother, my cousin. And I watched him there, and he looked at me and said, Elvin, Sing me a song. I said, Jerry, can we sing a song? We got choose the song he wanted me to sing. And we sang. He said, Elvin, I want you to sing Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. And just he just after we finished sang that song, he went back into his usual mood. And I looked at him, he just stared at me. I left Jerry there that Sunday evening and I came home. But I went back there the Monday and I saw Jerry. He did not say anything to me. He was just there staring at me. I felt so drained because I couldn't help him. And after a while I came home and I called some of the family members and I told them Jerry is not going to break it. But anyhow, I still had my hope he was going to make it. So the morning they called me from the hospital and they said, Elvin, your cousin Jerry has gone to the worst. They said, we have resuscitated him. When they said that word to me, I knew exactly what it meant. 
And then they called me back 20 minutes after and told me that Jerry is dead. I just couldn't, I just could not accept it that. I cried because I miss him so much. And today I'm here. I know you all you will understand my tears because we were so close. And Jerry's gone. I've lost my brother, my best friend, my cousin. And I hope and trust that. By his spiritual will, I know Jerry is going to be with the Lord. And this is my theology, this is my testimony. Thank you for listening to me. reading and dear Edwards Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 through 8 to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven a time to born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that was which was planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Here in the sick to read in. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask the stand for one final time. There's a hymn on your sheet, Tempted and Tried. Stand with me and let's do that final song. Tempted and tried, you are made to wonder why. Just send all this out. Tempted and tried, we are made to wonder.
cast our cares upon you because you care and you know. So take charge and have your way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may have your seats. Thank you so very much for standing. It's my delight to be able to share a thought of this funeral service or brother Gerald. But I'm not going to be speaking to Gerald. I spoke to him a number of times. We have lots of conversations. Today I'm not speaking to Gerald, even though his remains are there. I want to speak to us who are here. And I promise I'm not going to bore you. I just want to challenge you. I want to read for you a short passage from the book of Job, chapter number 19. Only two verses. Verse number 25 and 26. Job, chapter number 19, verses 25 and 26. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand on the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. When God created us, death was not in the picture. It was a plan for us to live with him happily ever after. We had a body that was so designed. But in disobedience, man sinned, and God cursed the earth and he took away all that protection and he announced ma death upon man. He said, the day you touch this thing, you will die. As long as you stay clear of that, there was no death. But we disobeyed and we did what God told us not to do. And so death came upon all men. Because we inherited Adam's nature, we are Adam's descendants, we all inherited that nature. So if God, until Jesus returns, people will continue to die. And if he doesn't come in that time, all of us here will die. That's one thing you can come down. So there is a certainty that until Jesus returns, there will be death. There is a certainty of that. And death is one of those mysteries that baffle human beings. We try to come to grips with it and no one has yet been able to come to grips with death. The Bible describes death as the last enemy to be conquered. So for us, we never get accustomed to this thing. We never get used to death. Death is that big thief who comes in and takes everything that you have. Now, someone breaks into your house and they steal some money or they steal some clothes or they drove away a car. You can get another one. You can buy some more clothes. You can walk and get things. We say, okay, don't worry. We get some more. Or if we have insurance for some of these things, the insurance will replace them. But when death steals anything from you, nobody can replace it. Death comes and they steal our loved ones. There's no replacement. Death comes and they steal all that you've labored for. You spend 50, 60, 70 years and you work hard and you sweat hard and you acquire things and you build yourself a comfortable home and you buy some things in it to make you comfortable and then the next day death knocks on your door and he takes you out and everything is left. It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter who you are. When death knocks, you have to answer. We can try to postpone it. We do surgery. We do all kinds of medical things. and We hook up all kinds of machines. And we resuscitate. And we do whatever we want. But when death really knocks at your door, he is coming. The point is that since death is certain, since it's inevitable, since it doesn't pick out who to take, it takes everyone at some point, it behoves us to be ready. Job writes, in all of his tragedy he was going through, the man was covered with sores from the head of his toes. And he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. He was confident that there is a God and that God is alive. He says, I know that my Redeemer, the one who is going to rescue me, he is alive. I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand on the earth in the latter day. And here is the baffling part. He says, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. If worms destroy a body, where is the body to see God? I know and though after the skin worms destroy my body, in my flesh I shall see God. And as I read it, you know, I, I, I started pondering a bit. I don't know how many of you know the thing we call a hermit crab. A hermit crab has a soft outer shell, not like the hard shell in the other. So what the hermit crab does is that it looks for another shell of some other sea animal, some other mollusk. And it goes into that shell, it makes that shell its home. So wherever it's going, it pulls that shell behind it. But as the crab grows, it gets too big for that shell. And so it has to find another shell. And the only how it can find the other shell is to come out of the one it's in. What does that have to do with anything? You see, death, the way we see it, we in our culture, we, we, we are terrified of death because death has this finality to it. Death has this 
mystery to it. That has this dishonesty about it that takes what doesn't belong to him seemingly, takes all our loved ones, all our treasures. But did you know that death is an entrance to life? Death is the entrance to life. When God created us, we had a body that will not die. But when sin came in, our bodies died. This mortal must put on immortality. This body cannot go to heaven, friends. In 60, 70 years, this body shrill, it becomes frail, shriveled up, and you start bending over and you can't go and you wake up in the morning. I love it. When Solomon writes about it, it says the windows begin to get dark, the grinders start falling out, the strong men are shaking. He's actually describing the changes that's happening in our bodies over time. And so this body with age will deteriorate. So this body can't make it to heaven because heaven is eternity. A body that goes to last a few years can't go to heaven because heaven is eternity. So we need a body that will be eternal. So this mortal must put on immortality. For this mortal to put on immortality, it has to shake off the mortal. So you have to put away this mortal being, you have to die, you have to come out of this mortal body in order to go into an immortal body. So my brother has just left behind the other shell that he had. Think of that permit crab. It shakes off the old shell. It doesn't go back to that shell. It goes into a new and bigger and better shell. The brother has just shake off the cloak of flesh. We are, we are clothed in flesh and it limits our being. We, we have to move with the flesh. And when the pain holds, we can't go. And when this, you can only go with the flesh. But when we are free in the spirit, we no longer are bounded by this flesh. And that's what death does for us, in fact. What death really does, it transitions us from a prisoner in our flesh to the freedom of our spirit man Jesus says I am the resurrection and the life if you believe in me though you are dead yet shall you live how am I going to live if I am dead because what is dying is a physical man and within you is a spiritual being and that baffles us what spiritual man inside of us I'm sure all of you have dreams in your life you think the meeting in your fresh dreams sounds ridiculous right what I'm trying to say, if you're just flesh, you shouldn't dream. Dream takes a realm beyond just the flesh. Dream takes on some inner force, some inner being. What inner being? There's a spirit man living inside of you. And that's who we're concerned about. This is just the, the shell of the hermit crab. This is just the flesh of Renal Murray. The real Renal Murray you can't see. You can't touch. You can kill this flesh. But the spirit man lives forever. Jesus says... I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, even though you die, yet shall you live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. This mortal must put on immortality. There must be a transition. So we, at some point in time, we have to welcome death as much as we hate it. As much as it's so final. As much as such a destructive force. As much as it's the thing we that battles us, we can't come to grips with. We need to welcome death at some point because this mortal must be changed. The twinkle of an eye, this mortal must put on immortality. And so the mortal being must go back to the dust. Dust to dust. Ashes to ashes. But listen to me, my friends. They that come to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. If you believe in God, and you're seeking God diligently. He promised he will respond to you. So when you die, you're actually going to meet him. The spirit man goes up because this physical man can't go anywhere. This physical man is tired. You know when you start getting old, you're getting tired. You start figuring, I don't want to get out of bed today anymore. A couple of years ago, you know, I, I used to pride myself. I run 25 miles a week. That was habitual. <laughs> I try to get out of bed now, everybody telling me, wait, well, you can't even get out of bed for having to run 25 miles. What are you going to do? I look at my brother coming in there this morning. When I was at school, he was a sprinter. He knows what I'm talking about. The test sprint, I watched him come in there this morning. He couldn't sprint anything. <laughs> but I'm trying to show us that this body of ours, this tabernacle, it prays, it, 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 it deteriorates with time. And so there comes a time when the spirit man needs to be free of this yoke that is holding it back so I can soar and be with the Lord. But brothers and sisters, for you to be with the Lord, you must make that conscious decision to make Jesus Christ Lord and Master of your life. Amen. I am not telling you about coming to church. I would love you to come to revival. Great. But that is not the matter. The matter is have you made peace with God? And you could tell me what you want. You could tell the person next to you what you want. You could even fool yourself. 
But you know the truth. Until you surrender your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not a candidate for eternity with Christ. You might call it fancy story. You might call it scaremongering. Choose whatever you want. What if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the word of God of none effect? God forbid! God's word is forever settled in heaven and it doesn't depend on you and I. God's word doesn't wait on you and I to conform it, to approve it. God's word doesn't have to go in a court of justice to prove that it's true or lie. God's word is forever settled in heaven. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He will receive you unto himself and there you will have eternal life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Will you accept Jesus Christ today? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I'm offering you life today. Behold, I set before you life and death. Choose life so that you and your family can live. Will you make a decision to follow Christ today? No, I know it's a funeral source, but I'd love to pray with you if you want to make that decision. You know, most people have a difficulty. Everybody going to watch me, this one looking at me. And when we all stand before God, John says, I saw the dead. Great and small, stand before God and everyone give an account for themselves. The person next to you wouldn't be giving an account for you. Your mother wouldn't be giving an account for you. Your girlfriend wouldn't be giving an account for you. You will give an account for yourself. Here's my question, brothers and sisters. Here's my challenge. If you're sitting in this church this morning, I'm not talking to Jerry. Remember I told you that? I'm talking to you. If you're sitting here and you've never made Jesus Christ Lord and Master of your life, this is a great moment just to stand up and say, I want to make Jesus Lord and Master of my life. I'd love to pray with you. I love to pray for you, but you have to make that decision. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and suffer with him and he with me. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But you must confess. You must open the door. Your choice. What will you do today? If you're here, I just love to pray. Just, just stand if you, if you want to make that decision. So we are all comfortable where we are. But I have done my part. I've given you the challenge. The decision is up to you. Don't bother about what the other people think about you, you know, because we all end up like this. If we're lucky. Some of us might fall out of a plane, some we born in a fire, some we disappear, we never find them. So this is great. You might think it's me and life is a strange way ending. So brothers and sisters, friends, ladies and gentlemen, all about your hearts and let's pray. You don't want to make a decision today. I can live with that, but I pray that God have mercy. Father. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I have done what you have laid on my heart, delivered your word to your people. I pray now that your Holy Spirit will speak to them, God, that will realize that there is an end to this temporary thing we call life. But there is prominence in eternity with you. So God, help our people to be receptive, be wise, to accept you. Speak to their heart now, I pray, in Jesus' name. I want to invite the family members to stand with me. Family members of Brother Innes. All of the family members, just stand with me, please. Just the family members. What? That's all the family members here? Okay. Thank you so much. Let's pray. Father, you were God. You know the heart. You know the pains and the struggles that's going to captivate these heart people now. But I'm praying that you were God, who are more than able, will bring peace. That the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, will garrison their heart, will protect their heart, will keep their heart in perfect peace, God. God, help them to bear this physical earthly loss. But to know that you are for peace and life to them. I pray, God, that you will put a hedge around them that will protect them from the perils of this life. I pray, God, that you will enable them to go through the rest of this day putting this body to rest and then God having to deal with themselves individually in the quietness of the night when everyone else is asleep, God, and they must deal with their minds. God, I pray that you will stabilize their mind. You promised that you will keep us in perfect peace if our minds are stayed on you. So let their minds be stayed on you, God, so they will find peace in the midst of this difficult time, Lord. God, I'm praying for your grace and your mercy. I'm praying for your great compassion to be poured out upon them. I'm praying, oh God, that you will embrace them in your arms and love them into eternity, God. So, Father, thank you for putting them here. Thank you for the responsibility that they have undertaken to put the remains of Jerry to rest. But his spirit man is not here, so we thank you for that too. And God, we thank you for all you are bringing us. And we pray that your blessing will remain with us. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Let me invite the rest of you to stand with me at this time, please. I'm going to ask them for our bearers. For our bearers, please go. of that song, and can it be? Long my prison spirit, that long my prison spirit, and as we do that, I'll have them take the body out. Now, I want the rest of us to remain where you are. We just allow the casket and the family members to go out.
Yeah, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the house.
Now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruit, afterwards they that are Christ that is coming. Then come at the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father. When he shall have put down all rules and all authority and power, for he must reign till he have put all enemy on their feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things on their feet. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and death shall be risen incorruptible and shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Man that is born of woman had but a short time to live and is full of misery. He comes up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow and never continueth in one state. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor but thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer. But spare us, Lord most holy, O God most mighty, O holy and merciful Saviour. Thou most worthy judge eternal, suffer us not at the last hour for the pains of death to fall on thee. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother Gerald, we therefore commit his body to the ground, or to earth, Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying, saying unto me, Right, for from thenceforth blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, said the Spirit, for the rest from their labor. Almighty God, with whom do live all the spirits of those who depart hence from this life. And with whom thy servants, who having finished their course in faith, do not rest from their labor. With the grace of our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest in the Bible to us. Amen. On your song sheet, you have some songs for the graveside. Like you know, I don't sing well, so I want you to join me and uh, let's sing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, there shall be no more. And the morning breaks it all over and fear. And the children of one the other side. And the rolling fall of yonder and the dead.
mighty hand will be upon him, you will take him into your arms for eternity. And for us, O oh God, we pray for strength to continue. We pray now that the grace of our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will rest, remain and abide with us all now and forevermore. Amen. So who going to crown them? You want to crown them? Jesus loved to hear little children sing. We will crown him with roses red. Oh, we will crown him with roses. Crown him with roses. Crown him with roses red. Oh, we will crown him with roses. Crown him with roses. Crown him with roses red. Jesus loves to make the children sing. Roses, we'll crown him with roses together. Oh, we will crown him with roses. We'll crown him with roses. 
roses, we'll crown them with roses to Close our broadcast now. We going offline. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 